Now, one of the things I've stressed in this module is that contracts don't need to be in writing. Right? They can be verbal or implied by, con by conduct, for instance. So then the question becomes, uh, how, do I, how do I know what's in the contract if it's not that signed written agreement that the parole evidence rule uh, covers? And to understand that, we've got to understand how we differentiate a term of a contract from a statement or representation made as part of the negotiation or deal-making process. So let's have a look at that. As this slide says, sometimes agreements are made orally or they're an exchange of documents like emails, letters, other forms of writing. And we need to work out which of these statements are binding okay, versus non-binding. So we need to distinguish terms from as opposed to representations. So a representation is something that's said during negotiations, but it's not intended to become a term of the contract. It's not intended to be a term. Okay. They don't form part of the contract. The main case we're going to use to help us understand this is Dick Bentley Productions. In Dick Bentley Productions, um, you had this uh, guy, Dick Bentley, who had a production company, funnily enough, and he decided he, bought, he wanted to buy a car. Guess, guess what kind of car he wanted to buy? Yes, of course, a Bentley. So anyway, Bentleys are expensive. And uh, he, he searched around for this used Bentley and he found one. Uh, off a dealer who, who had this Bentley over in Germany. It was a count in Germany, I believe. And so he rings the guy up and says, oh, uh, how about you sell me the Bentley? And the guy goes, sure. And he says, is it in good condition? And he said, yeah, it's only had the one owner, the count, and there aren't many miles on the engine. And he gets it back. And of course, the engine has a lot of miles on it and he has to rebuild it and it costs him a lot of money. So the question becomes like, we've got this exchange going on over the phone, for instance, and this statement that there's not many miles like on the engine when it isn't right, was that a term of the contract or was it a representation made? And the judge discerned this rule that we're gonna look at now to work out whether something is a representation or a term of the contract. So the test is an objective test. So it's what a reasonable person would think, okay? A reasonable person. Who is a reasonable person? Um, the classic uh, test used for that is the person on the Clapham omnibus. The Clapham omnibus, what the heck are you talking about? Gavin? It's a person, Clapham was a suburb in England. It's an average suburb. So a person catching public transport to an average suburb, not a rich person, not a real poor person, etc. an average person. What would they expect? And this reasonable person test had three elements. How long was there between the statement and the final agreement? The closer the time of the statement to the agreement, the more likely it's a term. Or put the other way, the longer the time between the statement and the agreement, the less likely it's gonna be a term. How important was the statement? The more important, the more likely it's intended to be a term. And did one of the parties have special skill or knowledge? If the party making the statement had special skills, the more likely it was intended to be a term. So now let's apply that to Dick Bentley. Okay. So we've got the agent over here. We've got Dick Bentley and they're speaking by phone. You'll notice I've gone old school, not mobile, because back in the day they would have been using a phone. They're speaking on the phone. And so the statement is made immediately before they make the contract. So it's close. How important is the wear and tear on the engine of a car? It's very important. It's one of the key things about whether the car will go. Did one of the parties have special skills? Well, the car right, is over here being looked at. Oh, what a terrible car. Anyway, you get the idea. The car is over here with the dealer. So only the dealer can look at it, etc. So they do at least have special knowledge that that uh, Dick Bentley doesn't have. Not only that, they, they deal in cars, so they've probably got a special skill. 
So there, they do have a special skill. Special skill and knowledge. So put that together, a statement made close that's very important by someone with skill and knowledge, yes, it's a term. Now, there's no hard or fast rule with this particular test. You know, you have to discern how the three things fit together. Is it more likely to be a term or not? They're the three factors that we need to look at under Dick Bentley Productions. So that all sounds pretty complicated, but what we've got here is a little flow chart to help us work out what is a term of a contract and what's a representation. So let's have a look at the flow chart. So if we've, just, so if we've said we've got a contract, we've got agreement, intent, consideration, and it's enforceable, then we can look and say, is there a signed written document if there is, is the statement in the agreement? If the statement's in the agreement, it's a term, right? Parole evidence rule. Okay, so there's a signed written agreement, but the statement is not in that agreement. The parole evidence says it's not a term. Okay, okay. So signed written document's important. Okay, what, what about if we don't have a signed written agreement? Is there a written document? Yes. Is the statement in the agreement? Yes, it's a term. If there's a written document and the statement is not in the agreement, is the statement in the agreement? No, so there's a written document, yes. Statements in the agreement, no. We use the Dick Bentley test. If it satisfies Dick Bentley, it's a term. If it doesn't satisfy Dick Bentley, it's not a term. Whew. Is there a signed written agreement? No. Is there a written document? No. Does the statement satisfy Dick Bentley? No, not a term. If it does satisfy Dick Bentley, it is. So the three elements, the parole evidence rule, the strange and Graukob and Dick Bentley productions can help us work out through this decision tree, whether something is a term of the contract or a representation. You remember back in module three, we discussed the idea of different areas of law or different approaches to the law. So what we can do now is look at some of those alternatives that we have when a statement doesn't form part of the contract and we don't have a remedy under a traditional contract approach. We'll do that in the next video.